Hi, and welcome to Eskimo TV. We're talking today to Dr. Kulvinder Lal. Dr. Lal is a leading UK heart surgeon. Hi, Dr. Lal, how are you? Good morning, thank you, I'm fine. Wonderful. Dr. Lal, let's talk today a little bit about angina. What is angina and how is it different from a heart attack? Okay, <clears throat> angina is a, a symptom so, uh, of chest pain. So uh, what happens is that when your coronary arteries begin to close off and block off, there's a lack of blood supply to the heart. And this to, in turn makes the heart uh, ischemic. So that means there's uh, not much blood getting into the heart. Now, a symptom of this uh, is angina, and this is chest pain, which radiates down into your left arm or can radiate into your uh, throat. Uh, there are also many other atypical presentations of angina. Some patients may get some scapular tip pain. They may just get a bit of shortness of breath. But generally, angina is known as chest pain and is a symptom. A heart attack is an actual physical, physical thing where the coronary artery is blocked off and it causes damage and death to a small portion or a large portion of the heart muscle. Uh, and once this has been diagnosed, there are many changes in that heart muscle. Uh, <coughs> which causes damage and death to that heart muscle. So a heart attack is an actual physical uh, death of the heart muscle, whereas angina is just a symptom of, of chest pain uh, from uh, a blocked artery. What are the different types of angina? Uh, there are a few. Uh, there is stable angina. So this is when patients uh, have established coronary artery disease and they get their angina after walking, say, 50 yards. And uh, this will happen every time that they walk 50 yards, so that then they would stop in another 50 yards. So it's a stable pattern disease. There is also uh, unstable angina, and this is when patients get angina at any point, even if they're sitting down having a cup of tea, they may get uh, uh, chest pain. And this type of angina is quite worrying and should be investigated uh, quite thoroughly by a cardiologist. Uh, there is also atypical angina, so this is uh, where the angina doesn't really mimic chest pain, but can cause other uh, symptoms such as shortness of breath, pain, which is not typical tightening of the chest, but can be slightly other uh, different types of pain, but again should be investigated by the primary care physician. What are the risk factors associated with angina? Okay, so angina is really a symptom of coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is uh, multifactorial. Uh, patients who have a strong family history of heart disease, those patients with diabetes, predominantly insulin-dependent diabetes, uh, patients with high blood pressure, known as hypertension, high cholesterol, sorry, high cholesterol, known as hypercholesterolemia, and those patients who smoke. Um. Who is at higher risk for um, suffering from angina? Is it men or women, and, and why would that be? Gen generally, it used to be men, but these days it's uh, equal predisposition. I, I think 50% of men and 50% of women, and I think it's because women have caught men up with uh, in smoking rates, in diabetes rates, and they're eating the same diets as men now as well, so their cholesterol levels are pretty similar. So at the moment in the UK, I would say, the slight preponderance to men, 55, 45, but it seems to be equalizing out. How would angina be diagnosed and treated? Okay. Again, angina is a, a, a symptom, so it would be diagnosed mainly on history, and uh, the primary care physician would take a careful history of chest pain, uh, which may or may not radiate into the throat or into the arm. Uh, if he suspected heart disease uh, causing angina, he would uh, then refer the patient to a cardiologist, and the cardiologist would then perform further tests such as an ECG, echocardiogram, some blood tests, uh, a chest x-ray, and possibly going on to an angiogram. If there is a history of angina in the family, um, what age do you think would be appropriate for somebody to start, um, you know, seeking out help from a professional? Okay, so I think uh, if, if you do have a strong family history, uh, surveillance is very important. And I think really from the age of 40, you should uh, go and get regular checks. Uh, this may be initially in the form of getting your blood pressure checked, getting your cholesterol checked. Uh, and there are some 
non-invasive ways of looking at coronary artery disease now. So you can have a CT scan that looks at the calcium content of your heart, uh, called the calcium uh, scoring CT scan. Uh, if that's normal, you're pretty much uh, safe from having any heart disease, although it's not exclusive. Um, but if it does show a high calcium score, then uh, it would be prudent to go and see a cardiologist to make sure that he checks out your heart. Can angina be prevented? Angina can be prevented by moderating the five risk factors that I mentioned earlier. So if, if you are, if you do fall into one of these categories, keeping control of your blood pressure, diabetes, um, and uh, the family history, obviously you can't do too much about. Uh, but the smoking also, try and cut down uh, smoking or cease it completely. If, those, if you can manage those, then you do uh, prevent the onset of coronary artery disease and subsequently reduce angina. Thank you, Dr. Lal. Thank you so much for talking to me. Pleasure.